Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with another one of those splendid, I might add, Vox reissues. Um, in this case, Mozart Piano Concertos 17 and 27 with Walter Klein, pianist, and the Minnesota Orchestra, and the always excellent Stanislav Skrovachevsky conducting. It's a wonderful partnership. Two, what you might call musicians, musicians. They are splendid. Now, Jed Disler reviewed this disc quite expertly for ClassicsToday.com, singing its praises, and I sing them as well. Uh, these are really fresh and lovely performances. Walter Klein, in case you don't know who he was, um, was an Austrian pianist. He died around 1990, 91, I think. He was born in 1928. Uh, and and he was absolutely marvelous in the Viennese repertoire. Now there are plenty of sort of Austrian pianists who were you know who made their reputations playing Schubert and Mozart and you know Beethoven to a degree and you know those people. Alfred Brendel being the most famous and Brendel was a a companion, a, a fellow countryman of Walter Klein. They were both born in Graz, and they teamed up together on several recordings, which you may recall from the Vox catalog. Um, but I think Walter Klein was probably the best of the batch, or certainly first among equals, you know, primus inter pares. He was just marvelous, especially in the music of Brahms and Schubert. Um, and he recorded a lot of it. It was all on Vox. It would be lovely to have a Walter Klein box. I know that Vox isn't doing boxes anymore. They're doing full price single releases. But there are certain artists who are really, really important, um, you know, who graced their catalog. And Walter Klein was absolutely one of those. If you don't have his Schubert Sonata cycle, you really should hear it. His style was one of, of completely unaffected, uh, lyrical, you know, it was no, no unnecessary or attention-getting virtuosity. Well, the music that he played didn't call for that, so it would have been inappropriate anyway. But at least he understood it. He really understood it and, and turned in just lovely, lovely performances of the Viennese classics. Now, this particular disc with Concerti 17 and 27, and he did a batch of Mozart concertos as well, um, is particularly fun because 17, well, for me, 17 is one of my absolute favorite of the Mozart concertos. It is just so delicious. It gurgles. You know, it goes dum bum ba dum bum ba da da dum ba da dum ba ba da and then the woodwinds come in with gurgle, 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 gurgle. I mean, it's the gurgles that make it so charming. The same thing with the finale, which is a theme of variations, kind of rare in Mozart's concerto finales. You've got this delightful tune with little woodwind gurgles at the end of each phrase. Do, 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 gurgle, 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 you know. You want to hear the gurgles, and you hear the gurgles. But that has nothing to do with the piano playing, of course. And the piano playing is just just sparkling. It really sparkles in this performance. I, I, I love it. Jed is more detailed if you go and check out his review, but I just I just get won over by the the sort of bon ami of the whole performance. It's it's so fresh, it's so attractive. Now 27 is a, a similarly lively and beautiful performance. And you know it's always important to remember, in my humble, humble opinion, that that there is no late Mozart that Mozart died, you know, when he was only 35, and he was at the very height of his game. And there's a tendency in looking at last works, particularly things like the Requiem and incomplete things like that, to say, oh, well, you know, it has this, you know, the shadow of death looms over it. And, and, and you know, the twilight chromaticism of, you know, heartbreak and, 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 and you know, upcoming disintegration and it, 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 it's such crap. It really is. 27 is a very lyrical piece. Um, it's a gentle piece. It's a, a piece that is in some ways elegiac because maybe Mozart was in an elegiac mood. Young people can be elegiac, but this performance has muscle. It has tension. It's not one of those sort of flabby, <laughs> you know, 
you know, looking into the grave, trying to, to impose on the music a biographical interpretation that it can't possibly have had. I mean, Mozart didn't write this th saying, gee, I think this is going to be a premonition of death or this is going to be my last piano concerto. So I have to infuse it with, with certain, you know, shadowy elements or any of those things. I mean, it gets played that way a lot, which sucks a lot of the juice out of it, in my opinion, because it is a very gentle piece. And so it needs to be played with a certain rhythmic firmness and propulsion, not to make it what it isn't, but rather to realize the innate contrast that Mozart wrote into it. And this performance really does that. It does it very, very beautifully. The sound is lovely. And as I said, Skrebachevsky is just a splendid interpreter or accompanist, pardon me, for Mr. Clean. Yes, Mr. Clean, that's his name. And Mr. Clean does a lovely, lovely job. So if you like Mozart's piano concertos, I'm hoping more of these come out. They really deserve to. And, and, and he did some of the more famous concerti too. So 17 and 27, I mean, they're famous, but they're not like the famous ones. Um, there's room for more stuff to come out in this series. And I hope it does. I hope it becomes a series. And he gets some systematic treatment because, because Walter Kleen really, really deserved it. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.